Hi, this is Matt from Audio Plugin Deals. Today we're looking at Spacelab Ignition from Fiddler Audio. Essentially, this allows you to get high-end immersive 3D reverb within any door. Let's have a look at it. So as I said in the intro, Space Lab Ignition is quite a high-end reverb that can either be used in what they call classic mode, so that's just your conventional send-return reverb, but it can also be used in immersive mode, and that is basically object-based. So you pick a particular sound, and then you define it as an object, and then you place it anywhere in a 3D space that you wish. And the results in both setups are superb. So let's get started then, let's have a listen to it. Just a bit of information on the project first, it's just a few random loops that I've pulled together which sounds like this. So just a bit of a techno thing going on. So let's take one of the sounds, for example, let's go this one. And then let's send that to the reverb in a conventional manner. To use it this way, ensure that you have classic mode set, like I have here. Then we can go listen to some presets. We have quite a selection here. Let's go medium bright. Let's add another sound. So obviously even from that you can hear that it just sounds absolutely lush. But let's now however move on to its real party piece which is the immersive 3D mode. So let's take off these sends like so, I'm going to unmute everything once again. Now instead of putting it on a send like we have, I'm going to turn it off and minimize. And in this case I just have it on the, well what I call the pre-master but that's neither here nor there. Let's turn this on. I have it set in object mode which is what we need. But unlike the classic mode where we just use the send return tracks, we now need a different way to send the inputs into Spacelab. And the way that's done is by using the Beam plugin. Now I always put this at the end of the chain for each channel, and this sends the audio from that track into Spacelab. So let's go and activate on all the rest of the tracks. And now when I play it back, you'll notice that there is no volume. And that's what we want because the audio is no longer coming out of these channels, instead it is being sent to Spacelab. We can click pass through, should we wish, but we generally don't want that because then we'll be duplicating the sound. So let's take that off, and then we go to the plugin itself, and on the left here is where we add the beam inputs that we just created. So let's go, we have seven tracks, so let's add a few more. So we go, we have seven there, and now if we click down here, we choose which one we want to be on channel one. So let's go kick for there, then let's click on the second channel, and then we'll have the bass on that one, third, and then so on and so forth. Alright, so now that we have them all assigned, and we play this back, we now have our full mix coming through Spacelab. And then on the right hand side, we can see our 3D space that we're going to use. So here in the middle we have our little person, and then we have our objects in front. Currently that's a bit misleading because we only have two colors. So let's go and change our colors, just completely at random. I'm going to do this quite quickly. And then the last one, let's make this one orange, perfect. And on first glance you'd think that hasn't done anything, and that's because it places the objects on top of each other. But now if we start moving them around, like so, then we can see them being separated. Obviously we're using stereo tracks as sources, 
And that's why each one of these has two. So we have a left and right for each source. And before I start moving objects around in the 3D space, I really recommend you use headphones to listen to this. So currently I'm looking at the top panel. So this, as it would imply, is the view from overhead. So the, the green ones to the left are panned to the left, but also slightly ahead of the listener. But conversely, the orange ones, which are the kick, are closer to the listener and with less of a stereo spread. So let's have a listen to this. As you saw, I just moved to completely at random. Just ensure that on the main page, the reverb page, you have a binaural mode chosen. These are essentially just algorithms. So let's have a listen to which one we prefer. go with E. There we go, that's sounding good. Now this is obviously where the fun happens. So let's solo the kick. So let's put them bang in the middle. Base obviously needs to be in the middle as well, or just slightly panned. Then we have our percussion, which is the purple one. Let's put that hard to the right and away from the listener. Then we also have this little synth thing. Let's leave that to the left like so. Let's maybe put this one behind the listener. So that's sounding really good so far. Now let's flick over to the side panel. And essentially this is looking from the side. So currently they're all on the same plain as the listener. We obviously want the kick and the bass to be on the same level, but we can perhaps move these other more percussive elements up and give them a bit of height. Conversely, we can move this other little synth thing down. We can do it that way, or we can also use these knobs to the left here. We have this one that we had behind us. Let's put this one quite high. So it's on the Z axis. 
Okay, so that's kind of quite good, but now let's add a bit of movement to it. So we have this little percussive element that was behind our head. So let's add some automation to that. And the way that automation works in Spacelab is that you need to define which parameters you wish to automate first. And the reason for that is just because there are so many possibilities that the list would be thousands upon thousands. So to do that, well, let's go back to our top panel first. And we're going to pan this all around like so. So as you can see here, we are moving the X axes and the Y axes. So if we click Alt and click the parameter, we have now added it to the plugin shortlist. Similarly, let's do the Y axis, Alt and click, and we've done that. And then let's just create a dummy clip in Ableton. This is just an Ableton thing, an Ableton nuance, the way that it works. So there's nothing playing from this clip. It's just providing the automation possibility. Now let's go up to our envelope section, Space Lab. We can now see our automation lane has appeared. So let's draw in something like this, completely at random. Like so. Then we do the same for our Y axes. And now let's play this back. Super cool to hear that dancing around the spectrum. Pretty cool. We can also change the entire space just the same way we did with the send classic version. Let's go large plate perhaps. Sounds pretty cool. So then once you've done that, you can either export as a two-channel audio within your door, just as you would normally. But if you want to retain the full multi-channel compatibility, then you need the MPEG-H exporter. Now this is a free download from the Feedler website. You install this after Spacelab Ignition, and then you determine how many channels that you wish to export. And then to play that back, you obviously need something that is multi-channel compatible also. So the recommendation there is the Fraunhofer Authora, which you can get from the Fraunhofer website. So all in all, a superb reverb in its own right, but then when you add the object-based mode into it, it really is super cool. In terms of the installation process, it really couldn't be any simpler. So you get one installer, and that includes the Beam plugin, as well as Spacelab Ignition itself, and then you just install it as you would any other plugin. So download the demo, see if it's for you, and if it is, then head over to Audio Plugin Deals, where it's currently heavily discounted. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.